Hey, hello, hello, guys. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good afternoon, Africa. Good afternoon, um, United States, Senegal. Um, I see that we've been watched from Columbus, Ohio, Alabama, Sierra Leone. So you can go ahead and just put in your country or which, whichever location you're in. We'll definitely be more than happy to share that with the world. Uh, my name is Demba, and I'm your host today and this incredible show with one of our guests. Uh, so we have the pleasure and the honor to receive today Mr. James Samba, who is a young, um, brilliant African we want the world to know about because he, he did something crazy, something amazing. Uh, people know about Elon Musk. We want to we wanna show you that in Africa we have millions of Elon Musk to be. Uh, so... Yeah, so how are you today, uh, my brother Samba? How are you? I'm doing quite well today. Uh, good to have you today. How is the weather in Sierra Leone right now? Is it sunny, um, windy? It's kind of sunny now, yeah. Okay, yeah, the, the good sun of Africa. We definitely miss it here from the United States. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's good to have you today. So we're going to talk about, you know, something that you invented, something that you created in your country. Uh, okay. First of all, we want to know a little bit about you. Can you tell us a little bit about you? Like, where were you born and where you grew up? Uh, you know. Okay. Yeah. So, of course, my name, my full name is James Momodo Daosamba. I was born and raised in Pujon District, Pujon Town. Attended there for my entire um, primary school. I left there for Christ the King College, which is in Bow City. And... Um, I stayed in Bow for about seven to eight years, pursuing my second education. And from Christ the King College, now I'm in the university. And of course, I have been an innovative and creative somebody from childhood up to now. And wow. of course, I, I have done some crazy innovative stuff, if I could say crazy, yeah. Okay, awesome. So you are in college right now. What do you pursue as, as studies right now? What do you study? Um, I'm presently studying software engineering. Okay. University. All right. So so you are working in software, but the reason why we have you today is because of the hardware. When you build something, yeah. uh, and it's um, you know, I'm trying to understand the the whole concept of what you build like it's it, it works with electricity solid like it's a whole jumble and you know we want to know more about this car that you built by yourself okay and you know what is it what is that thing that you built okay um the vehicle is an electric shuttle mini bus which okay. is solar power and of course it has um a hybrid system of um recharging so that's why it's using a solar assisted power to recharge itself and could also be recharged using the normal electricity grid, which of course is um, available here in Sierra Leone. And um, we'll also be having a self recharging system on its own. Yeah. But it's a vehicle which, of course, do not require any fuel or oil to operate it. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, has spaces for up to 10 people including 10 people. yeah including wow. persons living with disability those using wheelchairs because for far too long we've been living in a country um we are access to public transportation by persons living with disability has not actually been granted to them because um all the vehicles present talking from the rickshaw which we normally call here the keke the poda poda and of course some other forms of transportation do not have access for persons living with disability while sitting inside of their wheelchair and seeing that as a major problem also affecting um you know the people that are in the wheelchair i decided to make this one disabled friendly so they could stay in their wheelchairs and access this particular vehicle that that's I built. amazing so they can stay in their wheelchair and still be comfortable in your vehicle so 
just going yeah. through going through the article we read, uh, we we wrote about you because we wrote something about you. I'm sharing that article uh, in the field right now. You can definitely go and just read the articles on the AfricanDreamSL.com. And okay. so it, it it you know it, it was brought to my attention that she, you know there was a personal uh, you know family issue that leads you to create this car to build this car. Like what was that? Did do you mind sharing that experience with us? Yeah, um, of course, while growing up, I lived with an uncle who um, was a person living with disability. He was in a wheelchair and, of course, did had to go through all of these strains of not having access to public transportation because there was no space for him to enter while sitting in his wheelchair. And um, I could vividly remember while being a small boy, I used to be the one to carry him to the school he was teaching by then. And um, that was the only option he had for either me to push him to school or he had to push ride himself on the wheelchair to school. But when I left for the boarding home to CKC, um, I mean in CKC, to pursue my secondary education. Um, a couple of months after, he, he actually he was actually involved in a fatal accident from having to push ride himself and also having to take a riskier option. That's by hanging on the bike riders. I, wow. I, I, because that's normally um, the thing that they all do results to because they do not have space for them in the public transport so in the quest of finding a faster means of moving from where they are to where they want to go they will have to um hang on another vehicle either a motorcycle a, a, a car to move from where they are to where they want to go wow. so of course that's actually um gave me um an idea of not just solving the problem for him but solving the problem for the entire population of persons living with disability in africa who are presently risking their lives because they do not have access to public transportation and you're fixing the problem not only for just uh disabled people you're fixing the problem for you know also the able people yeah able people and the environment because it's a clean it's a car you know using clean energy if we can say that um yeah 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 and i'm so sorry about your uncle i mean that's very um you know that's very sad when we see that in africa we we see how disabled people are struggling on the road yeah whether they have to be pushed by their kids or they have to push themselves and the car are not the public transportation system is not built to definitely accommodate them or accommodate their condition, you know, as if you compare it to here in the US or in Europe where like you can definitely see, you know, it, for example, here in the US, they have some parking slot where you can't park if you have, if you don't have a disabled card, like if you park there, you're gonna pay a big fine. And, okay. and we definitely need to to get to, to that uh, spot in Africa. And, and then what you have built, you know, because of your personal experience, that's what we call an entrepreneur. You see a problem, you analyze the problem, and you find a solution, and you make it. Are, are you? Are you? So first of all, I want to know: Did you protect your idea? Is it protected? Because other people can just kind of copy your idea and just, you know, steal it from you. Yeah, um, it's patent pending, and um, of course, um, will be protected. It's patent okay. pending, certainly. Okay, so earlier we were talking about uh, you were talking to me about UNDP. So, what brought your car to you know to to UNDP? It's the United Nations organization, of course. Like, how did you come up um, in meeting those people and them being interested in your idea? Yeah, um, the UNDP do have a segment known as the um, Accelerator Lab all around Africa and, and I believe the entire world. So the UNDP Accelerator Lab team here in Sierra Leone are more focused on, you know, finding grassroots innovators and seeing how best they could be able to um, support those innovators with their 
ideas from scratch and see how best they could, you know, bring it to the limelight. So, of course, back in 2019, as a kid just from Christ the King College, I did saw a particular post on the grassroots innovation program from the UNDP Accelerator Lab team. So, of course, I did had to apply um, with the idea I had then, also trying to solve a problem for persons living with disability, which was um, the building of electric wheelchair for persons living with disability to give them a faster means of public transport. And um, from there, they did have to select me for um, a training program in entrepreneurship and innovation where they did have to bring about 20, I think, yes, about 20 innovators from all around Sierra Leone, you know, to train both in um, innovation, how to bring innovative ideas and all that, and also how you can use your innovative ideas to make money. That's the entrepreneurship part of it. And um, they put us all through that training. I was fortunate to successfully go through the entire process. And um, while on the process, I saw the problem of public transportation, how people do have to pay um, higher public transport fare to get to where they want to go because of the high cost of fuel all around the world now. And here in Sierra Leone, the poor and disadvantaged are actually suffering from this particular problem of having to pay higher public transportation fare, either to the school, to the market, or getting back from wherever you, you are to where you want to go has been pretty much really expensive for the general populace. And um, from there, I came up with this idea of building an electric vehicle that will solve that problem, solve the problem for persons living with disability. And um, yeah, since then, they have been interested in the, in the idea and of course, yeah. So they want you to scale up your, your idea to make it a business and they have been interested by the by your idea. So first of all, congratulations, you know, to you know, to to be um, you know contacted by those people and apply and be selected uh, by a serious program, you know, like that. It's it's a very good uh, you know it's a very good step forward. Congratulations for that. We Thank definitely hope much. the best for you, and we hope that your idea will definitely become like a very sustainable business. And um, so, what are the challenges that you're facing right now um, to to take your business to the next level? What are, what are the challenges that you're facing? Yeah, um, some of the challenges that I'm facing is with the financial issues. Because, of course, um, building something from scratch and also having to design your own model do have to cover a lot of um, financial involvement, especially in getting materials that are um, either to be imported or maybe bought directly from the shops. And that's what I do have to do to, um, you know, go to another level. And of course, financial issues has been the main, um, yes, the main constraint here in my own space. It has so you're, been looking for, you're looking for investors, uh, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think investors are welcome, whether they are in the US and everywhere. You can definitely contact yes, my yes, brother yes. here, uh, Mr. Samba, and they can definitely come up with some type of uh, business idea. Um, you know, it's good to see that, you know, young African are, you know, are taking the lead in, in, in innovation and just creating, you know, things that solve their own problem instead of relying on, on other peoples or other countries. Uh, obviously, you know, you, you did not rely on anybody. So I, I'm, I'm curious to know, how did you learn to do that? You know, I heard that you're self-taught, but how did you learn that? Did you, did you YouTube it or how did you learn it? um i actually didn't learn it from from anyone um, oh, really? it has been from childhood i could say okay. i started as this creative boy and um of course i was um kind of too much curious to know anything technological so of course i could vividly remember being a small boy um holding every electronic property in my household to see what is inside 
and see how how I could be able to make it into a different something. So that was me while growing up. I did have to uh, spoil a lot of my dad's radio, my granny's radio. And um, from there, I grew up in loving how to um, build something differently, how to actually create something from scratch and just to be innovative. Yeah. And um, since then, I've been doing uh, a couple of researches even though it has not been my field of study because I actually started up as um, an art student, studied okay. um, art in school. And um, to the first university I went, I did international relations, purely unrelated with anything engineering, you know, but the passion has kept me on the part of engineering. I do my researches. I try to experiment my ideas all by myself. So that has been um, a self-taught journey for myself in the innovation sector. Amazing. Amazing what someone can do in this type of situations. I, I And I'm sure if you were put in a better condition with, you know, very knowledgeable people and skilled people, you'd definitely be as, as successful as, um, you know, those Elon Musk people that we hear about every day in the news. I'm definitely positive about it. I remember from early childhood, we were able to create stuff from scratch. Like all children were, were doing that because we didn't have toys. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Growing up. So you would create, your, make your own toy. Um, and then, you know, that's where innovation and, and just, you know, all those skills come from, you know, definitely yeah, yeah, sure. the, 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 the nature and the challenges that we faced when we were children. So my brother, um, I'm very glad we had this discussion. It was supposed to be short and, you know, and definitely straightforward. Uh, I'm glad that, you know, you, you, you know, you were here today as one of our guests, our first guest, because we had a, a little bit of um, a pause um, with this live, but um, you know, anybody has any question, uh, we'll be more than happy to, you know, to forward that to my friend here. Um, and we wish you the best for the rest of your journey. Uh, and we definitely hope that you're going to get uh, investors joining in into your project, helping you, you know, take your ideas to the next level. This is this is what we talk about when we say African dream. It's definitely possible in Africa or everywhere in the diaspora. You can leave the African dream and we're trying to make it a reality with this discussion. So anything you want to say to to the public or to our viewers before we let you go? Yes, um, I actually love the entire public to um support support um grassroots innovators not only me there are so many innovators who of course um do have brilliant ideas that the that do need a support of people either by sharing publicizing the 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 the, the, the story of the young person and also trying to give whatever little support that you have to see that a problem that has been cited that either you or someone else is 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 um actually facing um is being solved through that particular solution that an innovator has brought up and um i would also like to um encourage the entire public to um keep me in their prayers to so to say if i may ask this for this um, small request, please keep me in your prayers and um, please pray that this particular idea of solving a problem that not only me, not only my uncle and um, not only the general public who are presently paying um, higher cost of public transportation to wherever they want to go, but do see it as a major problem um, to keep praying for this idea to be scaled up by those who can actually um support invest or, or um push this idea to another level so please keep on praying for me for this idea and let's hope for the best you're right and thank you so much for being our guest today uh and thank you to everybody for watching and we wish you the best for the rest of your journey as i said congratulations and you know and best luck my friend thank you
Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.